G'day guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now today, I'm going to be ranking the 2023 AFL coaches, but I'm super excited to go through and decide who I think are the best coaches this season in the AFL. What are we gonna go off? Do I go off just premierships? I guess that comes into the equation. Do I go off winning records? Because I think Chris Scott would be right up there. Do I go off demeanor and how they communicate with the media as well? I think that's gotta come in to account as well. Michael Voss, I'll put in the C category as well. Obviously not a great start to his coaching career at the Lions. He's definitely done some wonders at the Carlton Football Club so far. John Longmire is in the S category for my, actually I'm gonna put him in A. The Sydney Swans make finals every year bar one or two. They make grand finals every three or four years. They are consistently in the granny. And he's won one or two. I think he might have won one, but he should have won three or four. Horse can go into A. Chris Scott, I think, goes in S tier. I love listening to Chris Scott communicate. Yeah, we we, we thought we played poorly early in the game. Um, again, it didn't quite look like the way um, we wanted to play. He takes the journalist's questions very sincerely and genuinely answers them. And there's times where he says, look, I'm not gonna give you that because we wanna keep it in house. And he communicates that he doesn't wanna give up bits of information. Jeff Bowers, where will he line up? Um, well, yeah, I don't really wanna talk about that too much right at the moment. We'd prefer to keep that um, to ourselves. Instead of just champing the journalist, he sort of really takes their position in the AFL seriously and I, I find it so fascinating so I think uh, I think Chris Scott you know given the home and away record he's got two flags now uh, Chris Scott I think is in S tier Luke Beveridge and it might be recency bias it might be going off the first two games of the AFL season for 2023 but I'm, I'm only going to put Luke Beveridge in B he's never had a team finish in the top four I know he has made a grand final and I know he's pinched a grand final but they finished, what, sixth or seventh that season? So throughout the home and away, they're not a very successful team. You can't take away from the fact that he has won flags, but I feel like there'll be premiership coaches in and around, if not above him. So um, out of all the premiership coaches, I think Luke Beveridge is probably on the lower end, but he has done phenomenal things with that football side. You certainly can't take that away. I think what lets Luke Beveridge down is the way that he communicates in press conferences. I've seen in recent interviews, he's sort of been really like glass half empty on how the team's tracking. Luke, where did you feel it went wrong tonight? Uh, I think you, there's a few areas. Um... So I feel like if he could communicate a little bit better with the media, um, in turn with his fans, he'd be a little bit higher up the rank for my personal um, tier list. But yeah, he's done some great things, Luke Beveridge, and you know, he's certainly not the worst coach out there. I think Damien Hardwick goes in the S category. Yeah, they've been a sustained, successful football club for a long, long time. Uh, he coached a dynasty, and it just feels like with some of the changes that they've made, they won't be too far away from competing for that top four spot again. It could be this year. A lot of people have tipped them to be competing for the top four this year. So um, I think that's credit to, to Damien Hardwick and the way he sort of shaped the culture at the Tigers as well. He, he completely turned that whole joint around, which I think gives you extra points. Ken Hinckley. Oh, it's a tough one because Ken Hinckley is a phenomenal coach. Great personality, great coach. Man, I feel really bad putting him quite low down. Is Ken Hinckley in the same category as Luke Beveridge? He's made some prelims. He's coached some pretty good power sides. I think he's better than... You know, I'm going to put him up there, and I'm going to put Brad Scott up in B as well. What we've seen so far, Brad Scott, Luke Beveridge, Ken Hinckley, in my mind. Now, I know people don't like some of the way that I make these tier makers, but in my mind right now, gun to my head, similar echelon of coaches, but... We'll see how it shakes out. Ross Lyon, I would put in A category. I know that that's controversial because Beveridge has got a flag under his belt and Ross doesn't, but I think you just look at Ross's resume and what he does with any team that he gets his hands on. Like that Fremantle team that was making preliminary finals and also made a grand final, wasn't that amazing on paper. It had your Lee Spurs and um, a couple of other sort of you know, lesser-named players running around. 
And Ross Lyon just gets the best out of them. So I think Ross is one of the best coaches in the AFL. And if he had a flag, he probably would be in the S tier. Alistair Clarkson, oh, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't take long to sort of work out where he sits in the ranks. He's one of the best modern day coaches ever. Uh, what he's done at North Melbourne in the first two weeks is pretty crazy. Um, it's it's crazy what like a good like how important a good coach is. Um, Alistair Clarkson is is one of the best in the business that we've seen. How far can he take the ruse this year? Let me know in the comments down below how far you reckon Alistair Clarkson will take the ruse this year. Is it a bit of a you know pretty easy fixture? They've started well two and zero, or you know I think Freo over there is a pretty tough task and they got it done. Can the ruse push for the top twelve, top ten? Where do you think the Roos will go this year? We don't know a, a lot about Adam Kingsley. I'm going to put him in D for the sake of I do want someone in D and we haven't really seen a lot of the great man just yet. Sam Mitchell's another tough one. I'm going to put Sam Mitchell in D just for now. Look, the sample size isn't as big as, as everyone else's. But from what we've seen so far, the Hawks are battling. I, I think no doubt in a few years Sam Mitchell could potentially be up there as one of the great coaches. But... So far, just given what we've seen, uh, I'm gonna put Sam Mitchell down there. Now, it's quite funny that we've seen a similar sample size as Sam Mitchell to Craig McRae, but man, if Craig McRae told me to jump, I would say how high. That man is a fascinating character. I'm gonna put Craig McRae in the A category. I'm gonna say Craig McRae is a superb coach. It's just the feeling that you get when you watch the way that that man communicates. I think he's He's superb. He's just awesome. I would love him to coach my football team. Uh, yeah, the way he expresses himself in press conferences, he communicates what they're doing. Even last week in a press conference, he was saying, yeah, I'd, I'd tag Nick Dacos. Well, if I'm the opposition, I'd tag Nick. Yeah, I would. Like, he's a weapon. Like, and you've got to take something away from the opposition and I'd be looking to tag him. And Ken Hinckley didn't. Well, they tried to, but it didn't quite work. I love listening to those coaches that give you a bit. And Craig McRae, his energy and... Um, his, his persona, I, I think, is just awesome. It marries up really well with what this new Collingwood brigade is all about. So I reckon Craig McRae, could be controversial, but I reckon he's an A coach. Stewie Jew, now this is really rough. They've had a couple of fantastic victories in the last few seasons. I'm going to put him in... I'm going to... I think I've got to put him in D. Um, they just haven't achieved anything yet. They will, uh, hopefully, and hopefully it is under Stewie Jew. I think he's awesome. I, I guess he's probably in there because we haven't seen anything either. So... Um, yeah, no, no hate at all. Just that's where I thought Stewie Jew would land. Justin Long Muir, JL. I'm going to put in C. Now, after last season, I probably would have had him higher. And I reckon he usually chats beautifully to the media. And that's the only way we can get to know these people. But in the last couple of weeks, he's been a bit dejected and a little bit worried about Freo's season. I'm a little bit concerned for the Dockers just off the back of his demeanor. Uh, and we need to get better around the ball. Like, you know, it, I don't know what it ended up, but before we went on a little run in the last quarter, it was, you know, we were minus 10 centre bounce. A little bit worried about his demeanour in the last in the last few weeks. So hopefully Freo turn it around and we can see a happy JL. Chris Fagan, debatably, should go in A. He's a pretty good coach. But I don't like the Lions as much recently. They have beaten my team in two big games. So I've fallen out of love with the Lions. Oh, I think with what team he has and what he's done with them, I'd put him in the A category. I think um, I think Fagan's a very good coach. I really do think he's a very good coach. Matty Nix, I'm going to put in the, the C category. Once again, probably off the back of not really seeing enough from him. Um, I think they've got the foundations though, the Crows. I think they're starting to build something special and they've, they've laid the sort of concrete to be able to build uh, a good team around it, but um, just haven't seen enough from, from Matty Nick, so he's in the C category. Adam Simpson, I will put, and this is controversial, I'll put him in the B category. You know, he has got a flag to his name, and they have played two grand finals, so he's sort of similar to Luke Beveridge. So yeah, I'm gonna put Adam Simpson in the B category. Uh, I don't think he's, and, and, and it might be controversial. I know people will say Chris Fagan, Craig McRae, Ross Lyon don't have premierships. How are they above Adam Simpson and Luke Beveridge? I can't really justify it besides, it's just, I don't know, there's something in my heart telling me that they're probably better coaches. Uh, Simon Goodwin. Um, I'm gonna put Goodwin 
in the A category, and I've got a couple of reasons. I reckon he revolutionized football twice. In 2017, uh, we had a game plan where two or three defenders would come off the back line, and we had this almost like this this rush type play that would just get us repeat inside 50s. Uh, We played pretty well in 2017 before teams worked it out, but that was almost like a new style of football that was invented out of the Melbourne Football Club locker rooms. And in 2021, the Demons' defence and our web was lauded as like one of the best in the leagues and it was so hard for teams to sort of penetrate and he sort of outcoached everyone for 18 months before we got found out by your Craig McRae's. So the reason I'd put Goody up there is because twice so far I've seen him shape the league just through his own tactics. So I think he's a phenomenal senior coach and, um, you know, hopefully he can pinch another flag or two and get up into the S tier. Anyway, guys, that is it for my 2023 AFL coaching tier makers. There is absolutely not meant to be any sort of negativity here. This is the you know, the best of the best. So it's just splitting the top of the food chain up. Um, They all do an amazing job for their teams. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see what they all achieve this season. Once again, I appreciate all of the support. I appreciate everyone tuning in and I'll see you for some more content very, very soon. Cheers.